Hi, I am a British French citizen and I bought one house in London. This is how I make money. I bought a house in 2018. It was a two bedroom and believe me, it was a mess. I had to rebuild it from scratch and after six months, I started to rent it. Best decision in my life. And two years later, I can refinance it. Do you know what is refinance? Let me explain. So basically, the bank is giving you a loan according to the value of your house. So if your house is worth, let's say, $100,000, then they will tell you, okay, I can give you up to 90% of a loan on this value, which means $90,000, all right? But if you are lucky enough and your house increases in value for, let's say, $200,000, let's say, just for this exercise, so the bank will tell you again, oh, well, I can lend you again on a 90% on this new value, all right, which will be $180,000, okay? So 90% on $100,000 and 90% on the $200,000. So if your house increases in value, you can get more money. This is called refinance. Now, I want to buy another one, but UK, Brexit, Covid, it just seems too risky. Prices are going up and rent is going down. Does it even make sense to invest? So I had one idea. Let's try to buy a house in the top 5 most expensive cities in Europe. Why the most expensive cities? In the most expensive cities, people cannot afford to buy a one-bedroom house or even to rent a one-bedroom house. It is super expensive. I mean, I'm gonna tell you enough. So, what do they do? They rent by rooms. And here I come, because what you do, you buy a house that is two-bedroom or three-bedroom house, all right, which, which is large enough to have more people. You split it into different rooms and you rent each room to one person. Here, the margin is higher than 20%. Not bad! So here is my situation. I am a British and a French citizen. So this makes me a European citizen, obviously. And what I want to do, I want to buy a house in Europe as a non-resident and for an investment purpose. So I want to understand with you if it is possible for me to buy a house over there getting a mortgage with a local bank in one of those cities. So this is a task that I'm trying to resolve today. And the cities that I have chosen for this are basically London, as I already have a house in London, Paris, Zurich, Oslo and Dublin. Let me introduce you to those cities. London. So what is happening in London? Well, obviously Brexit. So this means that most of the financial institutions that are actually contributing for a large part of the GDP of the country are leaving or selling part of their business to Europe, Frankfurt, Paris, wherever. They are leaving, they are leaving. So this is really a huge problem, but what is happening in the market right now? Right now in London, prices for houses is increasing. Actually, if you want to buy a house in London, the prices right now will be exactly the same or even higher than the prices pre-COVID, just at the start of February or March this year in 2020. So this is a huge problem. Whereas on the other side, rentals prices are decreasing. So if you want to buy, you really need to think about it because prices to buy are increasing, but prices to rent are decreasing. That's so great for business. <laughs> for Frankfurt, the solution is here. We are an amazing city full of new banks coming from London. Actually, we want to steal all the banks to London. Come to us, come to us, come, come now. This is the perfect moment if you want to invest in Frankfurt. Ah, Zurich is a perfect city, close to the mountains, a lot of people with a lot of money, rich city, definitely a good option if you want to come make some business with the real estate world. We love nature, nature is amazing, we have mountains and rivers and trees, 
This is the perfect solution if you want to have a nice house next to the tree, made of tree, definitely everything around tree. We are an expensive city, come to us, come and buy a house from us. <laughs> Paris is a great option as well where you can buy actually really expensive houses in Paris in the city center so so yeah something interesting in paris is that it's actually a small city and there's no new construction or barely any new construction so everything has been already built which means that if there's no new building then the prices just go up up and up and it is harder and harder to buy a house so if you do it right now you can still buy a house and rent it at a very high price. Did you know that people that came to Paris to rent a house needed to queue? They need to queue for sometimes one hour just to visit a house. There would be more than 50 people coming to see the house that you are trying to rent. So definitely it is a good option if you are looking to invest in real estate in Paris. Dublin! Dublin is a tax-free country! Come and you will not pay taxes! Promise! Or maybe just a bit. But actually, definitely they do have a really good situation regarding taxes. So it's an option. And may I add that Dublin is actually part of the EU still. So great! So now that you have been introduced to all the cities, we want to have a look if we can invest Let's start the research. So, how to do it? It is very simple, everything starts with Google, really. But I have found a way very efficient to find the information. I mean, I cannot go and reach every bank myself. There will be too many banks, it will be too complicated. So, I will talk to real estate broker. They will be more likely to actually answer me and tell me if it's possible and what will be the condition. All right, so let's start. Let's start with Oslo. All right, so here we have all the estates, real estate broker that can help us out, really. And then it is super easy. We just go to each of their websites. I don't speak Norwegian, but there is something that I do speak, which is contact and everyone speaks English, especially in the Nordic countries. So it shouldn't be any problem. So I go to one and I just start, you know, I just start looking for contacts. So Mer has more, no, doesn't work. Where are your contact details? Uh, here you have it. All right, okay. So they don't have a contact detail, but they have a form. So just put your data there. So actually I did it and I will show you at the end what was the result. Uh, here, all right, okay, website under construction, okay. And you have more contact here. Just press whatever. I mean, I don't speak Norwegian. But here you have many offices that you can contact. Here is the email. So this is what you would do for Norwegian. You just introduce yourself. I mean, that's what I did. I said, hi, I'm a British citizen. I don't live in Norway. How can I buy a house to invest? Now, let's do it with Frankfurt. You do the same thing here as well. I speak a bit of German, but German is very similar to English, so contact is basically it's the same word with an AK. You just come here, select, and then try to talk to them. Okay, this one doesn't work. Expect in tailored commercial properties. Amazing, great. So yeah, so I will try to contact those guys as well. Here you have the email address. So I did that with five real estate brokers. So Paris, you will forgive me, I'm not French, so it's Courtier. All right, and here you are. Basically, very easy. I'm sure it also works in English. French also speaking. And here you can input your data and your message. How you can contact them. Here again, you can contact them. Contact, say no, means contact us. <laughs> very easy. You don't really need to speak the language, really. So yeah, so I did the same for five agencies. And here I do the same as well for Zurich. So, so yeah, so that's it. I mean, I already know the market in London. I am kind of an expert, so I already did it. Dublin would be exactly the same. And Dublin is in English, so everything is even better. So I have contacted five agencies for each cities, Paris, Zurich, Oslo, Frankfurt, and Dublin. Let's see their results. So if you were to buy a house in London, you would have to put 20% deposit towards the house value as cash, literally, like that. The interest rate that you would have to pay would be around 4.30% 
annually. With all the taxes, lawyer, all the costs, it's about $100,000 just on the initial investment for a house worth about $400,000. Um, tut mir leid, Entschuldigung, no, no, no. Foreigners are not allowed to invest right now in Frankfurt because of the COVID. Banks are not giving any solutions for non-residents or foreigners to buy in Frankfurt. No, 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 my dear, no. Foreigners are not allowed to buy in Zurich or in Switzerland. Foreigners, I mean non-resident. You need to be a resident or a Swiss to buy a house in Switzerland. The government forbids for non-residents to come to buy a house except in ski resorts. For me, that would not work. I would need to be in a capital. So if you want to buy a house in Switzerland, go to a ski resort. Well, I spoke to a few brokers already and everyone in Oslo told me it would be too hard to buy a house as a non-resident if I don't live there. So it would be a no for Oslo. Again, it is possible but it is just too hard. So France is not against non-residential investors that want to buy in Paris but they do require to have a minimum of 30% deposit if you want to invest in a house over there and you also need to have a really good and high income so but yeah but the most important thing is 30% as a minimum they won't even look at your documentation if you don't have 30% So Dublin is absolutely not against having non-residential landlords to invest in their country but it might be a bit complicated, let me tell you why. So let me explain. So if you are a non-EU resident, Dublin will actually allow you to come but you will have to set up an SPV which means special purpose vehicle. You will have to hire an Irish director that you will have to pay $45,000 per year hire an accountant and banks are willing to lend to you up to 70% loan to value which really for all these prices just does not make sense please don't do it I mean unless you have businesses around there don't do it $40,000 that you have to give to an Irish director just not worth it on the other side if you are an EU citizen just like me banks are willing to lend to you up to 65% to value which really is really not a lot the interest rate would be about like 2.5% this is actually much better but they told me that no self-employed were accepted which is my case so unfortunately I will not be able to invest in Dublin so as you can see I can only invest in London despite my uh, efforts. Every country has their own rules on who can buy a house and not only the government but also the bank. The bank will not lend to everyone because if you are non-resident it's going to be harder. It doesn't mean that I cannot. I mean I cannot right now given my conditions because I do not have enough to cover for a new mortgage in a foreign country but the day that I would get more money and I could put at least 30% of the house value or even a bit more I think depending on which countries I would be able to be an overseas landlord so this is it for now I will remain in London I will have to wait for the COVID to stop or to be resolved because as well this is an issue for us landlords so yes that's basically the results of this research so if you have more deposits you can do it all right so now you know the rules in those cities if you like the video don't forget to leave a thumb up in the top corner of the video and subscribe to my channel because i publish videos very often per week so subscribe and see you in the next video